Hi folks, my name's Jem, I'm the Crazy Pigeon Lady and it's my mission to entertain, educate and inspire you with all things pigeon and dove. Welcome back to this, my Pigeocation series and in this episode I'm talking about the Eurasian Wood Pigeon. Now there are over 300 species of pigeons and doves, so why this particular one uh, for Pigeocation? Well, I've chosen it to talk about because it's my local wild bird, my, the most abundant pigeon where I live here in the UK. Um, and quite a lot of my followers on my Facebook page and here on my channel are from the UK and Europe and you'll be familiar with this species, uh, but a lot of my followers are not. Uh, so I thought I'd like to share their wood pigeon love uh, with you. So, what is the Eurasian wood pigeon? Well, it's known by the Latin name Columba palumbus from the genus Columba uh, within the Columba day, the genus Columba referring to the Old World pigeons, Old World meaning uh, the European and Asian continent in this uh, context. The range of these birds covers most of mainland Europe, including the UK, uh, northwest Africa, where they get migrants from Spain, and also in some isolated pockets out eastwards towards Western and Central Asia. There are five subspecies uh, of the Eurasian wood pigeon and one of them, Columba palumpus madarensis, yeah, the wood native to the Madeira Islands, is actually extinct. So, at being a wild pigeon, I don't have an example, a live bird to show you today, but I do have a picture from one of my favourite bird reference books. Uh, so here we go. So uh, here we have the uh, Eurasian wood pigeon here. And in fact, helpfully, you can uh, see that it's just across the page there from our uh, favourite on this uh, channel, which is the uh, the rock dove or, or the feral pigeon. But let's just focus on the wood pigeon for now. Uh, it, so you can see uh, that it's quite a large bird with a sort of largely pale uh, blue-greyish colour uh, with a sort of pinkish or pinkish brown blush on the chest. Um, what you can't see there sitting, but they actually have uh, white wing bars on the wings, which you may be able to just about see in the, the picture of the bird flying there. Um, and then a thick dark band on the tail, a um, little bit of glossy green on the back of the neck and a white collar marking, and then a yellow beak. You can see there, not, not, a, not a great picture, there we go, let's get a bit, let's get a bit closer. Uh, I'll put um, on my Facebook page uh, some pictures in the comments uh, to help you. So uh, it's one of the largest pigeon species that exists within its range. Um, and it's a fairly heavy bird for a wild bird, so its weight is around the range of 500 to 700 grams. So to put that in context, uh, my bird Anna, who is a fancy pigeon, uh, who hopefully you will have checked out in my hashtag Bird Life series, episode one, Meet the Birds Anna, weighs about 550 grams. So she would be at the lower end of the wood pigeon uh, range. Dewey, my other bird, weighs about 650 grams. She's much heavier, uh, so she would be the higher end of the range. So the wood pigeon is about equivalent to a mid to large sized domestic pigeon uh, breed. The, the, the feral pigeon and indeed the wild uh, rock dove would be a much smaller bird uh, when you see them together. So the diet of the Eurasian wood pigeon is largely granivorous, that is grade and seed eating, but it's granivorous plus, so in addition to eating grains and seeds, they'll also eat uh, nuts and, and tree fruits, they particularly like acorns, they'll also eat windfall fruit, apples, pears, they also like berries, and they eat a lot of green matter too, they'll peck at weeds, grasses and tree buds in the springtime. And during the breeding season, which runs from about March to largely September, although can extend later if the food and weather is uh, good for them, uh, they'll also take small insects and invertebrates, worms, snails, that sort of thing, for a bit of additional protein. They're actually quite good at foraging out on long, thin branches, and they are surprisingly agile uh, for birds of their size and weight. 
So let's talk a bit about their behaviour. So like all pigeons, they have a, a call, a coo-based call. Uh, and if you live in the UK and Europe, this call will be very familiar to you, very early on summer mornings. Um, and it goes something like this. Very, very distinctive. Coo-coo, coo-coo-coo. Coo 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 in a very kind of ongoing and repetitive way, uh, usually done by the males uh, to attract them uh, to attract a mate or to proclaim a territory. Uh, this call gets a little bit more uh, rough and throaty and growly uh, at the nest site uh, between mates. These birds are largely solitary, so that so unlike the rock dove or the feral pigeon, they don't actually operate as a as a social group. Although they will gather together in numbers, which we call being gregarious, uh, where there is enough food and water available uh, for a large group of birds. But largely, they operate solitarily or as a family group during the breeding season. Their courtship behaviours are quite distinctive, so like a lot of pigeons there's some bowing involved, some fanning of the tail, so the wood pigeon male would, would stand up tall, it would inflate his neck and throat, he would do a deep long coo, woo, and would bow deeply, beak almost touching the ground, and as he did so fan the tail before standing up again and then repeating the motion. So unlike uh, rock doves who do a lot of kind of puffing and strutting and moving around, the, the, the male wood pigeon will, jet, will approach uh, the female gradually repeating the bow uh, as she approaches and if she is receptive to him uh, she, will allow, uh, he, she will allow him to come close um, and then they would go uh, to find a nest site. Now talking about nesting, like again in common with most pigeons, the Eurasian wood pigeon will build a, a nest of essentially flimsy pile of twigs and sticks and certainly those woodies that are nesting in the autumn months where it starts to get quite windy, these nests are very vulnerable to getting blown down. Uh, the male, like uh, other pigeons, collects the material and the female will construct the nest and like most pigeons they lay two white eggs. Uh, the fledglings will uh, be incubated for around 18 to 21 days, not too dissimilar to the uh, not too, too dissimilar to the rock pigeon, um, and the babies will fledge again at a similar period at about sort of 30 days, just maybe a little more, a little less. What's a little different from the rock dove uh, is that wood uh, the baby wood pigeons don't go straight into and integrate into a flock while the parents move on to the nest. Wood pigeons, because they are solitary birds, need to learn how to forage for food themselves. So for a number of weeks after fledging, uh, the young birds will remain with their parents and follow them around for a while so that they can learn where and how to find food and also to build up their strength uh, for flight. And it's during this period where they'll quite often be found hanging around in people's gardens, looking a bit sorry for themselves and a bit vulnerable. Um, and this certainly is a vulnerable time for them, uh, where they might be vulnerable to getting caught by cats or, or foxes uh, whilst they are learning to fly uh, and learning to fend for themselves. So there you go, there's a little bit of a whistle-stop tour about the Eurasian wood pigeon, a large, heavy pigeon from the European continent, North Africa and Asia. I've given you a few little comparisons to how it compares there to the rock dove, um, but they are very uh, welcome and, and popular visitors uh, to people's gardens here in the UK and also frequent, frequented parks too. And when you feed them, they are largely uh, quite confiding and can become quite confident uh, if they get a reliable source of food from you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that little bit of an introduction to the Eurasian wood pigeon. Uh, if you've got any comments um, or pictures um, about your experience with these birds or any nice little stories about them or, or maybe you've rehabilitated one that can't be released and you're actually keeping it uh, yourself, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, so thanks very much for watching, uh, please like and subscribe uh, to this channel, click the notification bell so that you can hear about my next Crazy Pigeon Laden video and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Goodbye!